the Obes of Dance when it comes to Brian. He loves that card. He's been known to play that card. And we are underway with a swap. No thought sees. As Donigan will draw, play an island, and this is a Cloudfin Raptor. Braun to win. Is it time for the pack rat test? It is. We'll see if Donigan can answer. Starting off with a flyer is really important if, if Dylan doesn't have something like rapid hybridization to just kill this pack rat outright. But this is one of the most problematic starts here for Mono Blue Devotion, especially because Brian also has a Muta Vault already in play. It's time for a Tidebinder Mage. Tidebinder Mage, excuse me. That will evolve the Cloud from Raptor and attack for one. Puts Brondwin down to 19. Brondwin does have his third land for the pack rat. So it looks like we are maybe headed down this avenue. I'd be surprised if Brian did much of anything else this game other than activate this pack rat. If Donnie Dylan is going to serve in here. If Dylan's able to find a Night Veil Spectre, perhaps that changes. Maybe Brian has a shift into some sort of removal mode, but for the time being, he's more than happy to race this sort of board. Well, it's a pretty good start here with the 1 2 3, 3 being a Thassa. Brian's going to discard a side and blood to make a rat. So he will have two 2 2s moving forward. Brian will draw a card. And Dylan, as you mentioned, quite young, but even at his young age, understands the value of getting beta basic lands for your decks. <laughs> you must have gotten to him early. He comes from a good home. Yep. I can almost, promi I can almost, almost promise early. you that. There is a swamp, one that you probably don't approve of from Brian. Not a huge fan. Yeah. This is not maximum effort. See Brian has in the fourth turn here again. You mentioned that there's a real likelihood that he won't play any more spells. You know, he has the ability to activate Pack Rat and activate Mutable to make the rats bigger and play a racing game. Well, Dylan has made this a little bit interesting with this Thassa alongside the Nyctos, which is now positive mana. So he doesn't have another flyer, but Thassa being able to make itself unblockable is quite potent here. So Brian may need to cast a removal spell over the course of this game to keep his head above water a little bit. Going to discard a Banishing Light. Looks like Brondwin does not have white mana. So there's a rat. There's an activation of Mutavolt. And this will be an attack here for eight. So Donigan's going to go down to 12. He will untap very quickly. Scry here with the God of the Sea. But we'll see where this top card goes in just a moment. And just like this, Donigan already facing lethal. Uh-huh. Doesn't take long. Now Donigan did keep the card on top. He's happy with what he saw. And it's a copy of Cyclonic Rift. That'll change some things. The problem is that Dylan is likely going to have to chump block to be able to survive. And each chump block that he does means he's further and further away from having enough mana through Nykthos to overload the Cyclonic Rift. So he kind of has to hope that Brian messes up, attacks in such a fashion that Cyclonic Rifting one of the attackers allows him to either kill Brian on the swing back or collapse enough of his board to give him some time. This is a Biden. And now, it's just going to be attacking the air. Going to hang back with Thassa, draw a card, play an island, and deploy a Judge's Familiar before passing the turn back. So you can tell he's trying to set up that rift. And that Judge's Familiar is really important for Dylan to have here. Otherwise, he would have been at risk of losing devotion had tiebinder mage been killed before combat here it means he has another chump blocker if brian makes a move and just attacks with everything so it's a pretty good spot even if brian has a removal spell for one of the creatures here even if it's tiebinder mage dylan still has five devotion left over in play and brian now is at risk of potentially getting killed on the way back or a lot of damage getting done to say nothing of the cyclonic rift that dylan is now working towards you know, the big question here is, what is the best use of Cyclonic Rift? He could have very easily just bounced an untapped rat token, you know, played the Cloud from Raptor that he has in his hand, and then you get in there. Give the beatdowns, or do you work your way towards the big, ultimate overload of Cyclonic Rift? I think that he is, Dylan is too far behind for Cyclonic Rifting one of the rats to be a long-term solution. I think this line of play is great. I think it gives him the best chance of winning this game. Well, now Brian is in the tank here. Now we know he's without white mana. At least he was last turn. Maybe he drew it this turn and he discarded the Banishing Light. And this is a tough spot for Brian here because it's tough for him to make an attack with Thassa up and ready to block. He loses one rat automatically. And if Brian doesn't make a substantive attack, 
then you're at risk of, of Dylan doing something really explosive the next turn. He has all this man to work with, abide it in play, thoughts are ready to go. And he has to worry about something like Cyclonic Crypt as well, so. It's tough for Brian to make an Alpha Strike, but he can't hang back. He's almost forced into this attack, even though he's likely to incur some losses. So Donigan does know that he is facing lethal at this point, so he needs to figure out what the best blocks are, as he can't just let everything through. We'll see what he can figure out. Thassa is an easy block if that is indestructible. It's a freebie. Mm -hmm. And Dylan doesn't have to do any blocking beyond this. I mean, the maximum that these two rats can deal is 10 if Brian makes one before damage and then activates the Muta Ball. And if that's all that Brian does on this turn, Dylan's thrilled. He gets to do a lot on the way back and then overload the Cyclonic Rift. Now, the big question, of course, is if this is his only block, is he better off blocking the real rat or the token? And it looks like he's going to move his way towards the real rat, and will he block with anything else here is the other question. Well, getting rid of the real rat makes sense if he's planning on Cyclonic Rifting. Uh -huh. I think people, generally speaking, destroy the original copy when it's not correct to, because there is a chance that Web of Erebos is in some of these decks. You don't want people getting back a pack rat for free if this game goes on super long. But in this spot with Cyclonic Rift in hand, I like getting the initial copy off the table. It looks like he didn't. Dylan Donigan's only block. We'll see what Brian's going to do here. Looks like he's just going to activate Pack Rat. And in normal circumstances, given what Brian's done thus far, Dylan would have to respect the possibility of Grey Merchant. But because Brian discarded a Banishing Light earlier, that's a tip off that it's black white mid range here. And he likely does not have to worry about Grey Merchant being in Brian's deck. 10 points of damage is going to come across. You saw Brian discard Whip of Erebos, a card that you did mention. So now, Donigan's going to keep that card on top, draws that card. He's at two life. But it looks like he might be stabilizing here with the help of Cyclonic Rift. Yeah, the question now is how much does he leave back on defense to block or chump block this Muta Vault? He does not want to lose the game to that card. Yeah. He's got such a huge edge. Going to generate a whole bunch of mana. It'll be seven right now from the Nykthos. And, yep, there's the overload of Cyclonic Rift. So now the rats are all going to go away. Now, how will Donigan attack is the question. He doesn't want to get overly aggressive. But here's an attack for five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Donigan's going to draw a couple of cards. Again, has not played a land yet this turn. Just needs to make sure he does not lose to Mutavolt. He's going to deploy one one drop, another one drop, and that is going to make it so that he's safe around a card like Bio Blight. And that probably closes the door on this game for Brondolin. It's hard to imagine that, that Brian has the mana to kill two things and activate a Muta Vault. He would need to have something like a land and an ulcerate in his list, mm -hmm. which is very unlikely. Mm, there's a block. There goes the Cloud from Raptor. Brondolin will just pass the turn back. Don again will scry with the Thassa, but I think this is a turn here where Brian's just saying, I'm not going to concede. you got to kill me. Yeah. Frost from weird pre-combat. Make sure that devotion does stay on, and that will do it. There's the awkward. <laughs> there's the awkward. Am I supposed to shake? Am I not supposed to shake? But it's game one. Hey, you guys can shake if you want. Yeah. You, you can do whatever you want to do. What we do know is that Dylan Donigan does win game number one here over Brian Brown to win. Model Blue Devotion up a game over Black-White Midrange. And a matchup that I generally like the Black-White Midrange side of. And Brian, with a great start, I mean, he had to turn two pack right on a play with Immuna Vault. Generally hard for Mono Blue Devotion to get out of that, but a mixture of the one of Cyclonic Rift and the one of Nykthos in Dylan's list allowed him to escape game one. Sideboards is where we will turn our direction to, and you have Brian's in front of you. A DSI, two copies of Doomblade, two Last Breath, two Underworld Connections, two Blood Baron of Escopa, four Duress, two Sin Collector. I think that the DSI will certainly come in. Very good answer to Thassa, Bind of Thassa as well. Two copies of Doomblade and two Last Breaths are just good all-round removal spells for the threats that Mono Blue Devotion brings to the table. Besides that, 
I, I don't think you're going to see very much. I don't think Sinclair or Duress or Honor World Connections are very well suited for the matchup. Blood Baron maybe is better as a win condition than Obsidat or one of the other large creatures, but if those come in, it's it's not a huge upgrade. Brian just feels it's it's fractionally better than some of the other win conditions he has access to. On Donning inside, we've got two negates, two gain excuse me, three gain saves, even though they don't matter in this matchup. Two dispels, two dissolves, two domestications, an additional cyclonic rift, a Jace's ingenuity, and a Jace Architect of Thought. Mm, I mean, does, domestication is good here, as we have seen over time. Quite a nice card in this matchup. And, you know, the Cyclonic Rift was good that game, so maybe we see the other one come in as well. Yeah, I, I think that the extra copy of Cyclonic Rift is reasonable, but I think there is a chance Dylan is pretty close to presenting the same 60. I mean, domestication has spots of being good. It is a bit on the risky side. You know, Brian may have Nightfail Spectre slash Lifebane Zombie. Maybe those get sideboarded out in the matchup. And besides that, you're looking either at Pack Rat, which domestication sometimes can get, sometimes not, and then threats that are much larger uh, than domestication can reach. You know what we're going to do? We're going to talk states really quick. Yeah. Because we have autumn states right around the corner, October 11th and the 12th. Starsteams.com slash states is where you can find out more information about this sweet program. This is going to be really fun. We've had a lot of success running the spring states. We're bringing them to the autumn as well. Uh, they're going to be available in all 50 states, uh, plus, I believe, D.C. and Puerto Rico yep. as well. Uh, we're very excited about this program, uh, especially since it'll be relatively new into Consum Tark here standard. So make sure to check this out. StarCityGames.com slash states for more information. You want a medal when you're state championships. You can be like Chris Van Meter. Or you like you medal. back in the day. Well, they didn't give me medals back in the day, but I did wear a medal when you first met me. Yeah, I'm and not wrestling. You had a, a, a high school wrestling background. I, I have a bevy of medals from a high school wrestling background. I'm not entirely sure why I thought it was okay to wear one of those to a tournament, but I did stand out. Yeah. I it's, did. It's not not okay, I guess. <laughs> a Thought Seize will show a Judge's Familiar, a Biden of Thassa, Astro Waves, Thassa itself, and three islands. This is one of those hands that looks really, really good when you draw up your seven and looks so much worse when you get hit with a Thought Seize. You can, Brian can either take Judge's Familiar here and strand Dylan's curve, or take Thassa and leave him with very little power in the hand. Yeah, an interesting decision here for Brian on what he does want to take. And it looks like he's going to go with the Judge Familiar. Slow you way down. Donning and Straw this turn was an island, so all he can do is deploy one of those and pass the turn back over to Brian to win. Brian, going to put you to the test? Yep. You beat it last game. Can you do it again? Much harder to do when you don't have something on turn one. Yeah, there's Judge Familiar. He's got that on turn two, but this game is different now. No curve outs here for Donigan. Bronwyn does have a third land. You can see an Urborg in his hand. He will deploy that. And I imagine that attacking is relatively safe, and so Brian will activate his pack right after attacking. Donnegan, of course, said no blocks. And now the tricky part is what card to discard. This may be one of those games where you can choose at random and it would be fine. We'll see. This one's going to be harder for Donning in the race. I will give you that. Without anything on turn one and without something substantial on turn two, it's going to be a much bigger challenge than we saw in game one. An also, island draw. a lot of what happened in game one had to do with the fact that Dylan had a Nykthos, which he does not have access to in this hand. And after the attack for one with the Judge's Familiar, a Fossa joins the battlefield. Brandon will draw a card for the turn. We'll see how he wants to move forward here. It doesn't look like he has a Muta Vulture just yet. That might be the only missing link for this draw. Now, here is an attack. There will be a discard. So, an attack for six here. Not again, of course, with no blocks. There's a Temple of Silence. Round one, we'll take a look at the top card and figure out where he wants to put this. I enjoyed the spots where the Black Devotion or the Black White mid range player has to still put up a good face like they're thinking about things <laughs> when they have this kind of star, you know, when re in reality you're just making a rat every turn. But you have to put on a good face, you especially do. when you're on camera. I mean, you know, I'm not, not begrudging Brian anything. Showmanship. Yeah. Oh, this is really, really complicated this turn. I guess I'll make a rat for the seventh straight turn. <laughs> <laughs> Here's an attack for one in the air. Donigan will cast the Master of Waves and hope this thing can live for a little while. Only three Elemental Tokens going to be coming in. 
Brondewin will draw a card. We'll see if he does have a removal spell here. Now there is an ultimate price, so won't even bother with the elemental tokens. There's the fifth land, and Dylan Donigan knows that he's beat, and a third game is where we are heading. Brian played a really, really tight game, contemplated his decisions really thoroughly there, mm -hmm. was able to, to push it to a third to game. To navigate with the pack rat. Just, you know, decided to activate it every turn, discarded what, you know, his non-removable spell cards. That was really good. Hey, as V. Moshevich said it best, just activate the thing. Yeah. Just do it, and just do it again until they die. And that's what Brian did that game. That's for sure. Easy breezy. You basically had to take one turn off, or, or two turns, I suppose. The first pack rat, and casting the pack rat, and the first pack rat activation, that's not the most ideal thing to do from an efficiency standpoint, but after that, it's the dividends, you know, it more than makes up for itself. I'm inclined to agree. Now, we did just talk about briefly our autumn states, but you know what's kind of cool? Yeah. We have more states coming. We do. We do have more states and regionals, too. Yeah, we're adding this program as well. This is going to be a winter and summer program, mm -hmm. the regional championships. We're going to have more details available for you at Grand Prix Orlando. But this is going to be happening, our regionals and our states, on every Pro Tour weekend going forward for, for 2015. We're not going to have any Opens that weekend. So the state championships in the spring, April 11, 12th, again, those are going to be held, all 50 states, plus D.C., Puerto Rico. The regional championships, we have more details coming. My understanding of the program for the time being is that there's going to be fewer of these events than states, more of a regional affair, and the prizes will be more substantial than at the state championships. But this is more organized play, open series points, invites to the Invitational, cash, all that good stuff. You know what doesn't suck? What? More magic. More magic. Medals, prizes, plant your flag at the regional championships. Dates announced, again, they correspond with the Pro Tours, where we are going to be having the Open Series for this year. Spring and fall for the state championships. You see April 12, 11, 12, October 17, 18, and winter and summer for the regional championships, February 7, 8th, and August 1st and 2nd. Look forward to those next year. 2015 will be here before you know it, trust me. Yeah, I mean, it was not that long ago that you and I were uh, stranded in a hotel room in Indianapolis, and now... I miss waking up that morning, turning on the faucet, and just hearing it go, <coughs> <laughs> not being able to spit out any water. Yeah, I knew that we had hit a crisis point in Indianapolis where they shut down the steak and shake. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you know, they're, at that point, they're essentially evacuating the city. Yeah, they might as well be. So you're telling me I can't get a Frisco melt whenever I want to? Yeah, that's what the point of saying, that's why you have them in your city. It's too cold for a milkshake? Yeah. <laughs> I beg to differ. Looks like Donigan is going to take a mulligan here. He's down to six on the play. Yeah. At that point, you just have to send in FEMA. When Indianapolis, <laughs> when Indianapolis is shutting down, that's, that's a crisis. That is a capital C crisis. Yeah. What exactly is happening here? Yeah. I demand answers. I'm not even kidding, though. I, I, you know, I, went, I looked outside at various times. The weather was clearly bad. Didn't know whether or not we'd be able to fly out the next day, all that kind of stuff. When I heard that the steak and shake was closed, that's it. It's like, I guess we're settling in, and I hope I don't starve to death yeah. because <laughs> now there's no food. We're not, we're literally not going anywhere. Yeah, we're, we are stuck. It's not happening. We are definitely stuck. Here. I know that the hotel restaurants were still open, and they just gave the employees rooms for the evening, so they yeah. have to go home because it wasn't really possible. That is... There have been a lot of memorable moments from the Open Series this year and during all the coverage that we've done, but that, that might still be the top of my list. Yeah. I, I still remember that, but mostly because we were mocking the storm. Yeah, it got us. Yeah, and, and it, it got the better of us. As here is a thought sees from Brian. You'll see a hand of Master of Waves, a Biden to Thassa, a Nightfield Spectre, a Frostburn Weird, and an Island. So this is actually a pretty good hand for Dylan. It is, but this is another one of the, you drop your opening hands and it looks great, and then thought sees makes it substantially worse. Might be a situation where we see him take Frost and we're going to try to blow up the curve, and that's what looks like it's going to happen. You have to imagine he's got a removal spell, probably ready for the Spectre, if Dylan does draw a land, and he did. Could be Pack Rat, could be Sign and Blood this mm -hmm. turn. A lot of different powerful openings here for Brian. Well, Brian does have a Sign and Blood that he's looking at, but does he have a Pack Rat? He looks a little unsure of himself what he wants to cast on turn number two. The risk here with Pack Rat is he casts it, Dylan plays a Night Bale Spectre, and Brian may be a little bit behind the eight ball because the first pack right activation there is not that efficient. Sign and blood for BBD. Drew a copy of Bioblade off of it, pretty important. Pass that turn back. Donegan will draw a card. There's the Nightfield Spectre. 
And if Brian was able to find a removal spell with the Sign of Blood, he's paid off much more for the sequencing. He doesn't have to deploy the Pack Rat right away. He can actually wait until turn five, hypothetically, and be able to play and activate it in the same turn. But this way, he doesn't fall behind at all. Gets to keep pace with what Dylan's doing and then clean up somewhere down the line. There's a Biden of Thassa. Here's the attack. There's the bio blight. That'll take care of that. Now, the Biden's in play, and this kind of contorts the way that Brian has to play the game, right? It is a little bit of awkwardness. I mean, not, not for the time being uh, from the activate side, but it does force him to keep up removal spells now that Dylan has a mutable. In a matchup that's a, a lot about trading one for one and, and, and attrition battles at times, you don't want your opponent to just get some free cards off of Biden of Thassa. A couple of copies of Pack Red have shown up to the party now. Donigan's going to play a Mutavault. There's a Judge's Familiar. That's a Master of Waves. Devotion will be four. Going to put Brondewin to the test. Does he have an answer to Master of Waves? That can take over this game all by itself. Yeah, this is going to be the swing turn right here. Brian can't answer it. Dylan's in the driver's seat. But if he can, even though Dylan has a Judge's Familiar and a Biden, the two pack rats give Brian an extremely quick clock. Dylan ready for it to die, and it does. Bio Blight will wash those ashore. There is a Goblet Shrine untapped. Now Brian's going to get in the red zone, bolt those rats, and maybe he'll make another. But he's more than happy right now, it looks like, to just pass the turn back. Make a rat on defense to beat those beautiful up on this turn right now. It looks like this might just be a removal spell anyway. I think this is one of those sequences where Brian's contemplating, you know, if Dylan animates his Mutabolts and attacks, I want to make a 3-3 rat and block. If Dylan sends just the judge's familiar, I want to do something else. And now you're seeing that's something else. Yeah, it is the Dia side, the Bidens. In for one comes the rat, and Donigan's got one card in his hand. It looks like he might be out of gas. Yeah, and it's just an island. All he can do is pass the turn back. You can tell he doesn't look too thrilled about it. Not a bad mulligan to six. But Brian had the answers. Yeah, thoughts he's pack rat. That's going to be tough to beat. Even if your six card hand is really solid, which it was. Well, BBD is going to move in now. Attack with both of those. Activate both those rats. Donigan will draw a card. He's at eight, facing down four, four fours. And Dylan with only six man in play. No risk of him ripping a cyclonic rip here either if you're in Brian's spot. Even if it's something like Master of Waves that is barely a speed bump. Yeah. In comes the judges familiar. I like it. You gotta show him who you are. Give him one more, give him one more taste. There's a domestication to take that over. Meet him all at the ready on defense here for Donigan, sitting at precarious eight life. Round one will draw a card. At worst, it's a pack rat. At best, it's a pack rat, too. Yep. <laughs> right now, probably. <laughs> yeah. Here's the attack with everybody. Mutavolt going to fire on up. Let's do a little bit of blocking here. Activate that. Discard the temple. Put a rat into play. Momentary bump in the road as Brian Brondewin is going to win this match over Dylan Donigan. Two games to one. Black-white mid-range takes down Mono Blue Devotion. And for Brian, it's another great start on day one. We'll see if he can put it together on day two. Though. Another commanding performance, 6-0. It would be really incredible if, if Brian were to up his record with another 8-0 performance on Invitational Day 1s this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be 24-0, and zero, right? I'm not mistaken. He didn't go 7-1 in the last one. It was you another 8-0. You were not mistaken. That's, I mean, even with two buys. Brian's had two buys at all these opens. He's earned those two buys. Yeah, that's still 18-0 and 0 against real human beings, all of whom were undefeated at the Invitational field. Yep. This is no small accomplishment. Brian Braun to win 6-0 with black-white mid-range taking down Dylan Donigan. We'll see what our next...